Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so, so much for that, Sam. Uh, hello. Out of curiosity, how many people over here are from cloud security? Just raise your hand. Oh, awesome. Cool. This is perfect audience for that. Anyone from AppSec application security? Oh, <laughs> oh wow. So, okay. Clearly, we're OWASP, so I'm, I'm not surprised there. Any developers? Oh, awesome. You guys can totally judge me for at the end of the presentation, by the way, uh, uh, as to how good I do or how bad I do. But I do want to say, by, start by saying I have a secret, which I would love for you to remind me towards the end of, it, of the presentation if I do not talk about it. So this is not to give, keep you hooked on till the end, but just to kind of call it out, there is a secret as I go through this. Hopefully, it reveals itself. If it doesn't, please remind me and so I can let you know, uh, so that you don't tell anyone apart from people on the live stream, obviously. Hopefully no one shares that anywhere. Uh, if I can move this, sweet. Awesome, so thank you for, I guess, clarifying who, how many people are here from CloudSec and our AppSec as well as developers as well. So for majority of developers, it's probably, I would say targeted a lot more for developers as well as the AppSec folks. Having spoken about cloud security for the past four years uh, on Cloud Security Podcast, I think we have about 1.5 million downloads as of yesterday. So we're, I guess we're ranked top 100 in the US, UK. It's, it's a popular podcast, let's just say that. Uh, the, one of the things we kind of came out of it was at the beginning of 2023, it became almost like a little uh, space on, in the tech world where a lot of people became transitioned from the cyber system admin side or network security side onto the cloud security. So kind of lost our developers and AppSec people somewhere in the mix of it. So my hope is after, at the end of this, you should at least be able to at least walk away thinking, okay, I don't have to be as smart as a cloud security person, but I can be just enough dangerous that can do a great job. So for people who haven't known much about AWS, I doubt people do not know what AWS is. Is there anyone who doesn't know what AWS is? Oh, thank God. I was like, do I have to explain what AWS is? <laughs> That'll be interesting if AWS hasn't done a great brand recognition job here. But essentially, a lot of people use AWS these days from an infrastructure perspective. They are the market leader at the moment, still after eight years, nine years. I got into the field uh, seven years ago. That was back in Australia. Uh, I've been in London for about seven months now, and I think it still seems to be Azure AWS are still the two leading cloud service providers at the moment. So the reason I picked AWS because them being still the largest as a developer or as an AppSec person is more likely that you would find the resources for AWS very easily. Also, the fact that uh, they are the largest, if you are looking for a job, it's probably easier to talk about the fact that I have AWS skills that you can bring to the job as well. So. From that perspective, that's the reason I picked AWS and not Azure or GCP. Um, there is a lot of services provided by AWS, and 200 is probably less than what I would say what the actual number is, um, especially for people who are looking forward to AWS reInvent, which is an annual event in, a, I think, in a couple of weeks. There's going to be 200 more that will come out of it. So I won't be surprised that number changes by the time this thing is actually making anywhere on the internet. So uh, with that said, what are some of the security things, at least cloud security people talk about, and what we share in the lunch and learn that we do with teams that we work with, whether it's your application security team or trying to do, quote unquote, DevSecOps. I'm sure people love DevSecOps over here. Everyone has their own definition. Cloud security people have their own definition as well, fortunately for us. But the, the crux of it, and so to simplify it for anyone who probably is not even from the security field, is, is just three things. Like as organizations, we care about the data. We care about customer data, we care about employee data, we care about data that is we are sharing with a third party, like a Salesforce, Workday, or any other popular SaaS application that you might see there. That's kind of like the core of what we speak about usually. Now, from a security perspective, another thing you also notice is that, so I'm just trying to keep my time around so if I I love to talk, so I can keep going. So I just want to make sure there's a timer there. There's another timer here as well. Uh, the second thing we talk about is usually compliance. And this is not for everyone. This is probably for companies which you find are traditionally in a regulated industry, whether it's your fintech or whether it's organizations that are primarily driven. Say, for example, the energy sector has their own standard. And uh, any company which is trying to work with a financial organization, which is HSBC or even Monzo or any of the uh, the newer banks, they all have to go through regulatory compliance, even if they might not be an actual bank in a lot of traditional definition of a bank. That's the second thing most people care about, and that's what you would hear a lot of cloud security people talk about. Now, the third one, this probably, 
the biggest overlap you would find when you interact with a security architect, solution architect, or even from an engineering perspective, cloud architecture is probably the most common area that you would hear a lot of people talk about cloud security. The two big roles that people have in a cloud context is either you're building a solution that has a predefined blueprint for how do you do it securely, which is how the Netflix of the world do it. We've been fortunate enough to have uh, interviewed people from Robinhood, Netflix, LinkedIn, and others who are probably leading the charge in how cloud security is done at scales of, we're talking like, I think one of the folks that I spoke to, um, they had about 20,000 Lambda functions. Now, Lambda is like a serverless uh, function that's used in AWS. They had all three cloud providers, which is the AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, private cloud, as well as your uh, mini cloud, if you want to use that word, for uh, people who thought they can make a cloud themselves, but then they realize actually this is too difficult, but the application still remained there. So from an architecture perspective, you'll definitely find that um, that definitely is probably the biggest area you would get more involved as a developer or as an AppSec person. Um, a lot of people have started calling it product security as well, where cloud security and AppSec comes together, works with the developers who are building a feature or an application to work on what's called a threat model in our world. Uh, for people who are from the development world, they probably would have done one. If you haven't done one, you should look into one. It's a great idea to do a threat modeling uh, for the application that you have. But the biggest thing, which not a lot of people talk about, is the AWS shared responsibility model. And I think, uh, well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but seven years ago when I started working in the cloud security space, doesn't sound like a long time, but in the cloud world, I I'm kind of feel it's a, such a long time that so many more services have come through. One thing that still remains confusing for a lot of people is the shared responsibility model. By that, what I mean is, we are in this building at the moment in TikTok, so TikTok has kind of taken the shared responsibility that, okay, we'll make sure that there is food available, people are secure, there's toilets available, even though it may be completely, I don't know where that toilet was, but wherever that was, um, it, the, the idea being they've taken the responsibility for, we'll make sure that it's a great event for everyone. Now, there's responsibility on Sam, me, and, and the other speakers to make sure that you guys walk away from here learning something. And hopefully, you guys have some responsibility as well to interact with people around you and get some value out of it as well, and hopefully not just eat the food and walk away. So, uh, but the point being, all of us have responsibilities in the cloud service provider context as well. There are certain things that they would take care of. They would walk in and say, okay, from a physical infrastructure perspective, I can take care of these things if you use these services. And you only have to care about the fact that what size of a server do you need? What kind of application do you need? And what kind of application are you building? What connections would it have? This is as simple as said, the three things that I was talking about, the architecture piece, this is where it becomes important, where if you're using something like a platform as a service, the responsibility of your, I guess, solution architect, security architect is limited to the fact that, OK, if I'm using a platform as a service, AWS takes care of my database infrastructure. They take care of rotating it when it needs to be updated. I don't know if there's DB admins here, so they might judge me for what I'm say, about to say this. But the, the point being, they take a lot more of the configuration responsibility for how do you manage that infrastructure. As a developer, you may not have to get involved apart from the fact that I have an API connection that I need to a database. I don't really care what happens after that. Uh, as a security person, we might come and say, make sure the secure connection, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, is probably, this is probably the alarm like, stop talking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a traffic light. Uh, well, it stopped, so I'm, I'm hoping we're good. Um, our dishwasher alarm, fair enough. That's a pretty uh, solid dishwasher alarm. It's like walking into the FBI building. It's like, um, okay, so the shared responsibility model for a PaaS service. As a developer, you might care about the endpoint. Uh, from a security perspective, what we might call out is the three things again. Encryption of data at rest and in transit. So making sure the endpoint is HTTPS, you're using data at rest. The second one being, oh, you understand the responsibility for the data that you're putting in is what you want it to be putting in. Another layer, which I would probably add from an architecture perspective, is that it is in the region that you want to go operate in. Uh, there is a thing called, yes, there's a new service which is only available for some reason in the US East region. Doesn't mean you have to create the service in the US East region. You just have to make sure that you are in the region that you're supposed to be working in, which is where the compliance piece comes in. So, Thinking more from that perspective is how you would say that a lot of interaction with cloud security, application security kind of starts overlapping a bit as you build the organization as well. Welcome. Uh, so 
four, I, I don't want to give a whole list. I'm sure there's people out there who can have top 10 uh, because OWASP loves top, top 10. I don't want to give top four. Uh, so, uh, so top four is the secure access management. Now, identity has been called out the, the probably the most important thing anyone can think of. I was on a call yesterday with a uh, top, I think they call the, the top 100 in America, like one of those, like FTSE 500, there's a similar in the US as well. And we were talking about how identity is kind of so complex in a, in a, in a world of cloud. Earlier, as long as I know Ashish's username and password, I, I can manage his credentials wherever. I can do single sign-on. These days, I could have something called an AWS IAM user, which is completely different to my corporate credential. And many folks don't have an idea that, hey, there's actually an IAM user, which is a local user to AWS, which I can basically sit over here, go onto console, and still log in my, uh, I don't want to use TikTok as an example, let's just say Instagram. Hopefully, there's no fights over here for that. But uh, let's just say Instagram console or whatever. And I log in over there. And I can still do and ac access everything that I would have with my corporate credential. That's, that's how dangerous it could be if you don't know that, hey, by the way, I don't want to leave a local user there. Another way it becomes a bit more complex is that all the cloud services don't give you everything, which means that they would say, by the way, if you come and work on our services, we give you infrastructure, we give you platform. But what they don't tell you is that they don't have the, what's the right word for it? They say security is important, but they would not say security is default, which is one, one would assume. Like they're doing three things about this next year, but for example, if I want to have MFA, I have to make sure I switch on an MFA. It is not enforced. But the number one recommendation everywhere is switch on MFA. It's like, that's their console, they could just turn it on, but hey, I'm not gonna judge. Same for encryption as well. It's just a tick of a button, but somehow we still have to click on it just to say, yes, please encrypt this. So things like that is what you would probably hear a lot of cloud security people talk about. Um, with that said, there is tooling available in AWS for you to work on. It's not that there is nothing. They do provide you IAM service, which is what I was referring to as IAM user. But what you would find, if you are, depending on the size of the organization you're working with, the organization which are fairly large and regulated would use some kind of a single sign-on service to authenticate user that is going to IAM. Uh, but you could be a small organization, a startup that's working on seeing, hi, I, I want to use AWS for, to see what happens. You can use IAM user, lo the local users that I was referring to. So there is a use case for it. It's a, it's a feature in that context, uh, but also it's, uh, it's vulnerability in the context of an, an enterprise as well. So just knowing where you draw the line for shared responsibility is important. Now, KMS is the key management service for encryption that you might use with them. Uh, they have a key management service. You don't have to rely on your sometimes slow on-premise uh, services. You can actually use the ones which are available from them. The advantage being it is native. So if, if you're a developer who's probably responsible for building applications that need to have data encrypted, you can find that the services that you use in AWS would have an easy integration. Um, for, for the hardcore, the one or two cloud security people over here uh, that I represent, uh, the AWS inspector is probably your, your favorite tool from that perspective. It's the vulnerability management for any images that you might be using in the cloud context. AWS Config is a friend of an auditor. I don't think there were any auditors here. Any auditors? Oh, you're standing out already with the orange. I love the band. <laughs> so for auditors, there's a service called AWS Config as well. Uh, which you can use to man or record the inventory that you may have in an AWS context, uh, and just to see as to is that, has it changed? Because one, the number one thing people complain about in, a, in an AWS context is that they don't have enough visibility. Now, well, I, I, this is kind of conclusion one is what I would call it. I won't say the conclusion yet. This is conclusion one, because I haven't really used 10X you yet. This is just catching up to what normal is. So I'm sure I'm getting a few nods already that I haven't 10X anything yet. This is just basically leveling up the playing field for people to at least understand what I'm going to talk about after this. So uh, key three points, compliance, make sure data is encrypted, and work with the architecture in a way that it makes sense. Uh, defense in depth, you can take whatever words you like. Prioritizing security in the beginning, I don't have to tell you guys, your AppSec folks, OWASP has been talking about this for a long time, so it's kind of uh, given. Collaboration is probably the one that we kind of miss out on most times where uh, we just don't talk to each other about it, so I'll say that. All right, with that said, this less than X is. I don't know how many people have been using ChatGPT here. Any folks? 
Oh, wow, everyone. Oh, wow, okay. Has everyone seen the uh, announcement that came in like a couple of days ago? Did you guys see that? Oh, a few, few, quite a few, quite a few, awesome. Well, essentially for people who did not attend, it's basically they have their Dev Day conference. They really, as part of that, they announced uh, something called a custom agent. They announced a few more things. They have their own version of App Store, uh, they, but instead of apps, they have something called custom agents, which you can define. So this talk was inspired by a YouTube video that we had released around how can developers 10x their uh, knowledge about AWS security. That was the, I guess, now outdated version of ChatGPT. So this is an updated version of ChatGPT from that perspective. And uh, what it is, is essentially an AI agent which you can create with no coding knowledge, like absolutely. Um, all the power to developers for knowing coding. I'm not a coder, but this was like, it took me two hours to build, uh, I guess, this. I made, I made a Cloud Guardian. It took me two hours to make this with no zero coding. The, the part of it was, it's, by the way, just want to put the pitch out there as well. It's an AI cybersecurity assistant with deep knowledge for cloud security in public and hybrid cloud environments. Now, that's all well and great. Uh, I, can, I probably want to show you in this, what does it even look like? Mind you, I only gave two hours to this, so if it, does, if it gives you a bad response, please don't kill me for it. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like. Oh, perfect, it comes in. Uh, so I don't think I can maximize this. But anyway, uh, hopefully people can see it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I might as well do that. Uh, sorry, just increasing the phone. Yeah, it was first time. Oh, there you go. Took me a while. Worked finally. Cool, awesome. So obviously, I've got default questions uh, that I can define. How do I secure an application? Um, now, something you might notice if I ask for best practice. You can ask anything. Azure, AWS, GCP. Not private cloud yet, but Azure, AWS, GCP. Uh, it is on the GPT-4 version. I wonder if it says the same thing that I did in the, in the slides. Oh, so far, so good. <laughs> Oh, okay. I didn't mention network security. I'll give it that one. Well, technically, I stopped at three, so they, these guys are going all the way till seven, eight. Is this turning out to be a top 10 now? Is this, I think it's an homage to order AW. Oh, my God, 11 as well. <laughs> okay, cool. Finally, it stopped. Uh, it did. Now, so, but the point being, this is. Like, they, this is available for people to kind of at least start thinking about. If you have no idea about what AWS security what should be like, at least this gives you a good starting point to go, okay, at least I know what the security service is. But is this good enough? We haven't really 10x anything yet, right? We want to be able to build something. So let's just say, uh, can you give me, oh, actually, someone told me about a service called CloudFormation. So let's just talk about what is CloudFormation. It should still talk in the context of AWS and unless there's another service called CloudFormation. Oh, it did pick up AWS CloudFormation. So someone told me in this meetup over here, you should use CloudFormation. Just do as simple as that. Now, I do want to put a caveat on this. What you would find uh, outside of the whole hallucination thing that you've been hearing about for ChatGPT, what you would find, at least for this form of uh, descriptive information, it still does a decent job. When you start asking factual questions, uh, say, after this, what I was going to do was ask for a CloudFormation template to build a virtual machine in AWS using CloudFormation template. Whenever it stops, it's like giving top 10 every time. You know, you just... Yeah, it knows it's an OWASP meetup, clearly. Oh, fortunately, eight stops. Uh, all right, so clearly, uh, I found out, someone told me in the security team I should learn about a CloudFormation. So I'm like, okay. Now I understand what CloudFormation is, but I have never written one, so how am I gonna go about doing this? Okay, so I, can you give me a CloudFormation template for uh, one virtual machine that talks to a database? I've just put it as simple as possible. I have not called out any service, nothing. Hopefully this works. It worked last night. So it does know Amazon EC2 instance, which is a virtual machine. Oh, it talks about the YAML format. 
I hate the description part. I just don't know why it tries to explain. I, sometimes it does feel like it's mansplaining something. So as it kind of prints all of that, I just want to call out, for people who probably have worked with AWS, you probably would notice it's very fairly familiar. Uh, there's a copy code option if you want to go and just paste it out. But what you would find, and this is kind of where a lot of security people get worried, is that um, you have your key pair. It doesn't talk about the fact that it's a resource. So you, you don't have to hard code your key pair in a way. It's kind of not a good thing, right? You probably want to have a parameter. But what we can tell it, so if I don't like that, and hopefully it finished. It finished, kind of. OK, so let me just describe it for people who have never seen a CloudFormation template. Uh, essentially, this is a, it's like how people have done uh, Bash Script or PowerShell. You kind of have like a thing in the beginning. That's like a standard for CloudFormation. It's, it's just required every single time. Uh, description is the same as any description. Resources is what you define as, hey, this is what I want you to create uh, as part of the template. I'm saying I need an EC2 instance. This is the tag for it. This is the image. Again, I've hard coded the image. Instance type is basically how powerful the machine needs to be. And key name is what is going to be my key or my username password to log in into it. Uh, this is security group is a, now I know that what in security group is, but you may not. So you could just basically go, what is security group? And it will tell you what it is, but I'll just give you a, 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 a TLDR version. It's essentially their firewall, like a software firewall. Uh, you can say that I want access from port 22 from to port 8080. Now again, you probably don't want everyone on the internet to have access to it. Uh, fortunately, it hasn't given it a public IP. No, there's no public IP, so it's good. Um, OK, and my database that I called out earlier. Now, oh, there's another firewall rule for the database itself, or for the EC2. Now, I could technically copy this and put it in AWS, and it has worked for me. So I can, I've done this in the past. It does work. But I clearly am not happy with it because it's not secure enough. So I'm just going to say, can this follow? security best practices that you called out earlier. So hopefully, uh, it does a decent job. Okay. Yes, keep going. But essentially, what you've done now, in a matter of what, uh, less than two minutes, we have a CloudFormation template, which potentially is, uh, once it finishes, is at least using security best practices that you can use as a starting point. This may not be the best version, but at least it still screwed up the 000, but hey. We'll, we'll get to that. It's, it's still a work in progress. Uh, but the, the point being, you are able to create templates uh, which are semi-decent from zero to nothing, like from absolutely nothing, not knowing what security best practice is, not knowing what a security group or CloudFormation template. From there, you can go all the way to, and it kind of ex does an explanation of what it has enhanced. Um, oh, there you go. It talks about how, what you should do. That's a good thing. It's probably not the best way because you just need to figure out where do you put that in. But um, this is still, from my perspective, from the fact that I did not know anything, now I've gone from there to I have a CloudFormation template ready. Now, I did say I, it took me two hours to create this. So uh, there isn't a lot of training data that I could provide to it, uh, which is kind of where I'm hoping you guys can help me with it as well. So what I've done is I created a repository on GitHub. If I can just plus it again. Uh, so the training data that I've used so as Sam was saying earlier, so Cloud Security Podcast has been running for four years. We have over almost 200 episodes where we've spoken to people like Netflix, LinkedIn, and a lot of other places. Uh, all those interviews are basically in a transcript uh, that is available publicly. You can either go through all the interviews yourself, all 200 of them, or you could just do what I did, which is basically provide us a trained data. I only have season three, season four, because it took it's taking a long time. So I was like, OK, I'll come back to this. But the point being, the transcript for that, those episodes from our YouTube are all available here. And it's basically, that's what's being used in the background. I think I can show you what it looks in the background as well. So, uh, edit GPT. So that's, that's basically the files being uploaded over there. Uh, those are the same files that I have here as well. But the point being, at least in my mind, as I keep doing more interviews and I keep sharing it, it's collecting information from different companies around the world and it's starting to learn the fact that, oh, okay, this is how Netflix does it, this is how LinkedIn does it. So if someone uses it and asks a question around it, they should hopefully get an information which is a collective 
understanding of this is how all the people have done, and we should just this is how we should apply it. Now, in saying that, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and other cloud service providers, they would continue to evolve. This stuff does not have information about what would reInvent have. So the, the challenge then becomes that I have to upload white papers or at least something which I trust from the cloud service providers here as well. Because the information that, say, I may share may be as good as what I know right now. But right now, as we speak, someone just did something amazing. It's not, no, no, no. It's, uh, for some reason, we did not find them on Cloud Security Podcast, and we never interviewed them. What happens to all that information? Uh, but this kind of becomes like that trained data. My hope is, uh, and folks can contribute into it as well. Uh, just kind of want to come back to this. Um, yeah, so as of now, oh, this is not the one. Oh, sweet. Actually, this is worthwhile calling this out as well. Um, so what you saw just now, what I created in two hours, for people who have used GitHub Actions, this is literally the same thing. Uh, there is something called AI Actions that they have also opened up as part of this. What that means is I can integrate that with 10,000 plus services on the internet. Like literally what, what you saw just now, which is just me providing my trained data, you can integrate that with AWS services to say that every time someone fills out a form on self-service for security, that I need a CloudFormation template, it triggers a Lambda function to create a CloudFormation template and send that over to the person. Like, that's one of the possibility. You could have a one for your team. You could, so they have integration for GitHub, GitLab, uh, AWS, some services of AWS, some services of Azure, nothing for Google Cloud, unfortunately. I think from what I saw, there was a TikTok one as well, considering this was TikTok, so I thought I should put something TikTok in there. There was a TikTok conversion. I don't know what that's used for, but clearly something important. Uh, but the point being, uh, they were, you can use this for enhancing and enabling you to do, okay, I have an issue. I just want to create a Jira ticket for it. You can do that over here, or, a, or an Asana ticket, or whatever else you use. This opened up the door for the possibility that I don't just don't have to restrict myself to the fact that, oh, I just have my trained data of all the real people with the real experience I've shared with me. I can also hook up into AWS to go, I can probably have a, uh, some kind of an online tutorial at the end of it. This is a video gets uploaded to a certain place, people who have access to it. I mean, possibilities are endless. But the, for what you can do, you can use this in your organization as well, if you feel comfortable and if your security team allows for it. You can explore this for what this may look like for your organization. I think I've spoken to a lot of people over here over the past seven months who are already using ChatGPT in their organization, so it's not like a big leap to ask for, hey, can we add another space onto it? This is me as a security person saying, as I say this, I am a bit nervous as I say it. So that, oh, what am I opening up myself to? I, I don't know, like 10,000 integrations to what? So it is easy to train, uh, but obviously I would help. I would like your help with this something as well. That I don't trust myself to kind of do the right thing always, but I'm hoping uh, others who are interested in using this can go to the GitHub repository, provide their trained data, and we can use that as a play way to at least start giving right information uh, to, at least right training information to the, to, the, to the AI agent. Now, this doesn't have to stop here. Uh, oh, sorry, I haven't mentioned the secret. No one remind me of the secret. Come on, guys. So this is like the, I kept going, I didn't even realize. So the secret that I wanted to share is, this, this can also help you with something else. Uh, if you don't have many presentation skills, and if you only have sometimes half an hour to prepare for a, I don't know, a OWASP London chapter meetup, you can, you can use uh, capabilities to produce slides. Now, I will let you decide, and you can let me know later on if you connect with me on LinkedIn or something, which part of the slide was AI generated and which part did I create? Did, that, did anyone pick up on which ones were AI generated? Oh, someone did. Oh, <laughs> uh, which, the, these ones. Yeah. Well, pretty good, man. <laughs> this is what, clearly, you used it. Well, do you know what service that I use for it? OK, cool. That, I'll leave that as a secret for everyone else to find out. But at least one part of it mystery is solved. So you can clear it. At least I wanted to leave some Easter egg, so it's not that difficult. Plus, I could not find the format for it as well. So the, you know the first conclusion that came in, and this kind of switched over? I could not find the same format, so I'm like, OK. I need to do something here, so 
this is the best Google slide version I could find. So, but that was one secret that was out, uh, which you can use as a developer if you like. The other one, which is what service that I use, I'll let you guys find out. But hopefully that 10x is your, not just your AWS security skills, but your presentation skills as well. That you can, if you don't know where to start for, I don't know, an OWASP London meet, I'm sure they'll be happy to kind of have people, more speaker come over and talk. You can come over to Cloud Security London Meetup as well, which we run, which Sam attends as well. We'd love to have you guys, but uh, the point being, not just 10x your AWS skills, Azure skills, GCP skills, but your regular presentation skills if you just don't have an idea where to start. Because a lot of times you get people saying, oh, I don't know what can I present on. You can use this. Uh, I did it, so I'm sure you guys can do it as well. But that's pretty much what I wanted to present on. Uh, any questions at this point in time? No questions, everyone knows chat GPT, perfect. Okay, we do have one question on Slido. That was, uh, what challenges did you face when you were preparing Cloud, Gu Cloud Guardian? Oh, right. Um, what were the challenges? I guess the first one being, so they did update the data to be as recent as April 2023. Uh, the hardest part was to, like I had to call out, does it need to be friendly? Does it need to be professional? Like what kind of responses am I giving? And I also had to call out that it should not give any medical or legal advice, because then that kind of puts you in the category of like, I don't want to be responsible for someone, I don't know, just using it for, do I have backache? I don't know what that is. I don't know, it could be a mole. But, uh, so I didn't want to get into that territory, so I had to, and this is obviously, I did some research around what's the boundary that I need to have. So having an understanding of what that boundary needs to be was a good one. Um, which may be different if you work in the medical field. Uh, the other one that I had to call out was what kind of nature would the person have? Would it be fully professional? Because think about this from a community perspective. You want it to be professional, but at the same time friendly enough that it doesn't sound like adversarial when it's giving an answer that you should use this cloud formation template, otherwise this is not the right way or something. So like thinking about what the person, it's like naming a child or writing a story. It's like, uh, what's the personality that you want this two person to have? So that was difficult because I had to come up with the right word. Actually, logo was created by that as well. I didn't create the logo. Uh, that logo is by, uh, AI. <laughs> yeah, uh, what's their tool? Dali? Dali, yes. So, so that, Dali is integrated into this as well. So Dali created that. Uh, I'm actually going to use it for other things as well. So <laughs> why not? Uh, it looks pretty good. If, uh, so I had to call out, what do I want my cloud logo to look like? Friendly eyes was a thing, and apparently that seems to capture a lot of attention because the first version looked like a machine with a cloud, and like, that is not what I want the things to be. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely has, that took a while as well. That took, that's probably where I spent half an hour trying to figure out what that looked like. <laughs> so I kept describing different eye shapes. Does it have a hand, does it not have a hand? But the actual setup of it was, I would probably say less than 15 minutes. Like that's how it, long it took me to just decide, this is what I want, this is what the nature needs to be, and I was just live. Now, I have not made it, uh, I guess, available on their app store. You may choose to make it available on their app store. I think you get money for it as well if you can have enough usage of it, maybe present it whatever, at meetups if you want. I haven't done it. I just kept it as a link because I don't trust it enough yet. I haven't provided it enough data to go, oh, you, you know, you can start using it. I, I don't personally feel comfortable. So that's why I kept it as a link, so people can use the link, which is available, and test it out, maybe get some trained data for it. Uh, but there is an option for you to kind of make it available on their app store, and I don't know, tweet about it, and people start using it, you start making money from it as well. Um, but that's, being security comes with a risk, so you don't probably want to give bad advice, uh, especially no legal medical, but at the same time, cybersecurity is another one. Hopefully, no one uh, in a, I guess, a big enough organization that has a lot of responsibility uses the advice that's provided, so, call that out as well, but cool. hopefully that answers the question. So as a continuation, since you mentioned the original versions of the uh, graphic weren't to your satisfaction, I have a question. What was the most outrageous hallucination you've seen from it? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, the outrageous one, I, I think the one that came out to me was when I asked for the best practice for the first time. It named a service uh, which I thought I had not seen before, and I'm like, I don't think I've, there is a service like this. The thing is, I didn't save a history for it because this doesn't save a history. So I couldn't go back to it. By then, it was already 2 a.m. in the night. And I was just like, this is clearly me hallucinating rather than the thing hallucinating. So I just switched off and walked away. I, didn't, I couldn't recreate that thing. So 
There was one, but I'm not sure if it was me or if it was this. <laughs> oh, I see. So it's something, it created something which doesn't exist in the cloud formation That's right. language. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of like, so because there's definitely conversations that we had around one of, so there was a joke in the AWS world, uh, I think last year or a year before, where uh, Virgil, who's the CTO of AWS, they kind of pre released a series of tweets about a service that does not exist. But it's like a whole thing about it. Every uh, popular person in the cloud space, cloud security space, started posting about it. And I think we spoke about it in the podcast. And I don't know if that's where it got it from, but it was just like, why is it talking about that service? That's why it's like, I'm not sure, but that's kind of where, because I gave it the trained data, and I'm like, maybe it was that. So I don't know. This is the short answer where whether I should trust myself or the trained data in that, but that was the weirdest thing that I saw. Excellent. Any more questions from the audience? Yeah, this one. one. Well, a couple. This one. Hi, I was wondering if you tried to give uh, ChatGPT contradictory information and then ask him to detect if there is any contradiction. Ooh, like what would be an example of a contradicting, uh, yeah. Like just for example, like if you see the training data that's incorrect, will it tell you that it's not right uh, security practices? Yeah, actually, so the, for, for I guess people didn't have the mic, the contradictory part is if I give it wrong data, <laughs> would it just, learn the wrong data, because I guess what, we, what I saw was kind of like the wrong data as well, because the service didn't exist. It technically did learn that and assumed it was the right service, because that's what training data said. So does it give you any like feedback in terms of your training data that it might be incorrect in any way, or is it you just give it and it just takes it? Basic, yeah. That okay. It's basically like you're, you're almost, yeah, that's right. It's like a four-year-old. Yeah. It's how people describe chat GPT, where it's like a four-year-old, you're trying to train them, feed them, probably take them for a walk. And then just in terms of the training data, what types of media formats does it take? Is it just text-based only? A PDF, uh, PDF text-based, those are two that I've tried. I, can yeah. probably, I don't think it actually calls out. Uh, it doesn't really say. So this was the, uh, I gave it an AWS HIPAA security architecture white paper. So it took PDF, it took uh, text files. It, but actually, yeah, there was a limitation. So the reason I did not do uh, all of the data was because every, I think every fifth file or sixth file, it would just show an error draft, and I couldn't understand what error draft is. It was, and it would not upload the file either. Once it, it showed me error draft, I could not even save the agent. So I had to just go back to the drawing board, start again, as in not go back to recreating the thing, but for that fact, whatever the, the train data at the moment is, I had to come back to that start again, upload one file, see if it works. Oh, it worked. okay, I try again. But I could not just give it like the entire folder uh, in one go. So there's definitely some bandwidth limitation or at least some form of uh, file upload limitation there because I imagine they, because there is a extra service that you can pay for at least, at least what they announced over there was that next year onwards they would have extra service for more tokens to be used. I don't know if that would make a difference, but hopefully that does. But yeah, apart from that, there's no feedback. Basically, here you go. This is what the world is. It just consumes it and shares it back with you. Oh, there's another question yep, there. More questions here. Just a quick one. Um, what training data would you like to train it on if you could just click your fingers and have it done? What like huge library? Uh, I, I think the, the reason I picked up the Cloud Security Podcast uh, transcript was because I, I feel like the... Uh, the part which is missing in, say, if you're looking at AWS, Azure, GCP, their documentation, like if I look at AWS, it's always about, this is how you use AWS. How do I solve world peace? Oh, how do I get world peace? This is how you use AWS documentation. I'm like, no, but I kind of want a general answer. So I always felt that the cloud service providers don't give you, hey, you could use another service. You don't have to use us. That kind of unbiased view which is what I, I started off with the, uh, I guess the transcript data for all the folks that we had interviewed, because that is general bias. We've never had someone give a sales pitch or anything on it. So I know that data would always be valuable and they just shared their experience. We spoke about things like, your, how do you hack into an AWS account? What's the pen testing like? What's vulnerability management? Like, all that without calling out that you should use, I don't know what service we would use, whatever service you want to use for it. We definitely, I trusted this data more. So if I could snap a finger, I would probably say, more that kind of information, if I could just collectively like get that from all of you, it would be amazing over here. But unfortunately, that's limitation at this point in time with 200 episodes. <laughs> it was
so two questions. The, the first one is you had to ask for a secure way when you brought up the CloudFormation template. Uh, is there a way to make that default? So it chooses the default? Uh, I tried. So because obviously, if you look, so th this is what the instruction looks like. Basically, you know, I was talking about an approachable, trusted advisor, engaging, accessible, blah, blah. You kind of have to keep reiterating the version of how you want the agent to be. And I tried secure by default. It just didn't change anything, so I went back to what I was doing. So it's kind of hard to, uh, I guess, the, the harder challenge is to know what prompt would trigger what you're trying to say, or what you're trying to make it understand. Secure by default may mean different things. It could just become like a, I don't know, like a government building at that point in time where everything is just by default, which I'm sure all of us know is not practical. Like, yes, as much as government would like to think it is practical, it's not practical. I think that's kind of where I struggle with it. So maybe, uh, maybe better prompts to kind of explain what it's like would be a better way. But I, I couldn't get an answer for it, sorry. My second question is, uh, the logo, uh, stickers on that table? Yes, definitely. Next month? Oh, no, it is. I, I would love to bring them stickers right now. It, it was 2 a.m., man. Like, like, I want Amazon service for printing stickers straight away, because I'm definitely going to print those, because be, they look pretty cool. I'm like telling my wife this. I might have a bill next month. Sorry. <laughs> next month, yes. Sorry, yes, thank you. Hi. Um, some people mentioned about the hallucination of this. Um, do you have any advice on how to protect from hallucination? I think I would say hallucination is pretty much a real thing at this point in time that you cannot bypass. The reason, so a lot of the organizations, the way they've implemented ChatGPT is that they have a proxy in front of them. So, they, so you're not directly talking to ChatGPT. You have a proxy in between for two reasons. One is to identify you're not putting any corporate data in there or sensitive information there. So that's one way for them to make sure that Yes, we're allowing people to use chat GPT, but we don't want them to put like, I don't know, company documents in there. So one is to at least, even if there was data that would not, or hopefully should not be uh, incorrect for, from a hallucination perspective that, hey, the Bob said my salary is, I don't know, 100,000 pounds, but I, actually the HR said something else, you know, something else, something like that, that would not be the case. But I would say just by nature of what we are doing, we, I think you rightly said four-year-old, you're trying to tra train a four-year-old to go, four-year-old to go, tell me how the world works. And they have a very limited view of it. So it's almost like a, uh, what's the word, right word for it? Social pressure of us trying to give it so much information and asking so many questions. I feel that's where the hallucination comes in in my mind. But uh, the part where hallucination becomes even more trickier and for one reason, I would say, is not allowing someone who's probably junior to go into this and accept the information. Most organizations, so I was part of the top 10 OWASP AI security, LLS, sorry, uh, the top 10 LLM. Uh, I did contribution onto it. One of, the con one of the conversations we had was, number one thing people spoke about is prompt injection is one way to find out that I can probably take some information out. But in reality, like I struggle to make it secure by default. How do I make it say, just give me passwords that you found on the train data? Like, for whatever reason, in that transcript, someone actually mentioned a secret, which I never took out, is, I don't know, like, it could be there, but is, is there for a way for me to sell it exactly that prompt? Hey, by the way, every time someone says password, ignore everything after. It's, I don't know. Like, so, hallucination is hard for that reason at the moment. Uh, the, the two things people are doing is a proxy uh, that just stops it. The second one people are doing is even though they're using this for helping the developers, especially the junior developers are coming in, they're still being told before you put a PR in or before you put a pull request in or before you put any submission in, someone still has to review it. Uh, someone who's probably experienced. Like, I could tell it was not secure because I have seen a cloud permission template before, but for someone who has never seen one, they're like, oh, I guess this is secure because this is Cloud Guardian, and they said they're looking at security. So, like, that's where you would find that, like, that's what made me go, I, I don't know if I want to release this out on the internet as an agent for App Store to consume. I'd rather just go, okay, I'm going to stop at the point where it's a private link, where people kind of work with it, train the 4 year to be a bit more ma mature and have a better understanding. But the hope is chat GPT will keep improving. So, sorry, it's a long-winded answer, but, like, that's kind of what people are doing. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Any more questions from the audience? Yeah, one okay. more. One at the back as well. Hey, Ashish, uh, good talk. Thank you. So uh, we have the agent train on your episodes, which have been two years old. Uh, uh, no, as of, yeah, as of last week, so all season four. So all the way up to 
the last week episode, yes. Awesome. So what if, two things, one, if, if there is contradictory statements within the episodes, what happens where? And two, how do you make sure what is out there is standing for the future? For example, TLS1 is no more secure. Yes. And you might have said that three years back, hey, use TLS1. So how do you take care of that in the times to come? That's a good request. That's a, that sounds like a PR issue right there. <laughs> Pull request, Kamil. Uh, no, but see, that's the thing, because I definitely don't feel uh, agents, uh, maybe it's a good, good, good thing to call out. I don't believe agents are ready to be released as openly as they have called out, as, as, in, as um, OpenAI has called out, for exactly this reason, because it makes me also question that, yeah, actually, things that we used to do seven years ago, we don't do that anymore. Like, I don't write Excel, Word, PowerPoint in my CV anymore, because I kind of know it by default, hopefully I know it by default, but the same way, but that's best practice now. So if you see a resume now, which has Excel, you're like, I don't know when he made the resume last. Like, what have been some time ago? Yeah, so I don't know how it would react. I don't think it can deal with that. It just, it's literally, uh, the, at least there's a, so we have a second podcast as well called AI Cybersecurity Podcast. Feel free to follow. Uh, so on the AI Cybersecurity Podcast, I was talking to the CISO of Robinhood, uh, which is a financial organization in, in the US. So he's been researching quite a bit. He's part of the Cloud Security Alliance uh, AI safety chair. And him and I were kind of talking about the fact that uh, a, the prompt injection part, but also the fact that how do you keep up with the outdated information? Like, yes, you can give it access to internet, like the recent version of Chat GPT has access to internet, but that still doesn't mean it would not hallucinate. It, that still doesn't mean it's gonna verify multiple resources, because at the end of the day, internet is filled with people like me and others just sharing opinion for, this is what I feel is right. And no one ever wrote anything after that, so I guess that's right. To your point, TLS 1.0 is still secure, maybe ChatGPT is thinking, because no one ever wrote a blog or anything about the fact that uh, TLS 1.0 is not secure anymore. So I, it's, a, it's definitely a great question. I don't have an answer for it, and I think it's a good pull request as well. I should put it in my cell phone. <laughs> but no, thanks for that question. There was someone else in the back as well. Was that? Oh, yeah. Well, no. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It is actually. Hi. Uh, thank you for the talk. That's super uh, interesting. And just coming back to what you said about how ChatGPT in general is good at describing things, but struggles a bit more when it comes to the facts and you know when you highlight a certain point. Um, how big is the difference between just throwing the same input to the default ChatGPT compared to with Cloud Guardian? And how big is the potential uh, with these custom agents? Does it feel like you can actually improve it quite a lot? Or are we going to be limited to that inherent kind of so limitation? Yeah. It is the same, because the first version when I did not give it any training data, it actually called out that my information is updated as of April 2023. That was, so, that, so when I first made this at 1 a.m., I think, uh, it basically did not have any training data. This is just me still thinking, what should I give it as a training data? And uh, at that point in time, every response kind of had that oh, uh, this information is as updated as of April 2023, which is what they announced at the dev day as well. Uh, but once I gave it trained data, it stopped giving me that prompt. It didn't say anymore April 2023. And I don't know if it's because the last transcript that I gave was from like a week before conversation that we had on Cloud Security Podcast. So um, maybe it, there is a dip point of difference where I'm giving it more information on top of what it already knows. So... Uh, maybe there is some contradiction only based on the train, training data, uh, but then again, I've only had less than 12 hours with this, or maybe 14, but uh, I would come back another call, but hopefully that would be helpful. But hopefully this was help, well, helpful. Thank you for the question as well. Great. Uh, I see another great question uh, answer, uh, asked on the uh, Slido, and the question is about your thoughts on prompt engineering and how important knowing prompt engineering and uh, applying it to make custom GPT? Did you basically use any of your prompt engineering skills? Uh, I don't actually, so like that's pretty much the only prompt engineering I had to do, basically instructing it to behave a certain way and what do I want it to be, uh, I guess, considered an expert of. Like, but I would see this go really get better when, so for people who use chat GPT, nowadays you can have custom instructions uh, and uh, me and Caleb, who's the co-host at that AI Cybersecurity podcast, him and I have this thing which is like an uh, advisory board that can stands up every time I ask a question. 
So if I ask a question about marketing, there's a marketing person that stands up. I, as when I say stand up, literally, it would say, oh, we have a, in the advisory board, we have a marketing person, cybersecurity person, IT person, business person, and they all share their opinion. And then we have a contra contrarian who would question everything that's been so spoken about so far, because there would be a bias in everyone's conversation. I think that would be amazing if I can get to that point where every response that you get is a conversation between a cloud security architect, a developer, an AppSec person, and you kind of have a contrarian for, as a, as a team lead, you're just sitting and just going, okay, I have security architects saying that we should have encryption by default, but my dev people are saying this is actually, this is deep in the network, I don't even know why I have to encrypt this, and then I have the AppSec person saying, we should do a threat model. <laughs> so, like, and then you can make a decision, which is an informed one, to go, okay, I think the next step from here for me is this. That would be amazing. So at the moment, the problem engineering is literally just what you see on the screen on how the agent needs to be. Uh, but once you start adding custom instructions, you can go quite advanced and you can start doing advisory boards for the question that you ask. Uh, you would get an expert in that particular field and a contrarian. I mean, you can go further than that. This is what we came up with as we were doing the podcast, but um, there's a lot more you can do from a problem engineering perspective. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I came up with. Hopefully that answers the question. And there was one more question, uh, which is going to be the last question. If you have any more questions, please do uh, approach Ashish during the break. Uh, I'm guessing that question came from someone from TikTok team in the audience, because I said, Ashish, have you thought about integrating this with TikTok, which means you put a video uh, <laughs> on TikTok and then people comment and that and they, and the they only reply. TikTok, <laughs> I, I, that would have been fun, but the only TikTok integration I found was TikTok conversion, TikTok lead gen, so maybe they need to create a new uh, service for it. I think it'll be, it'll be definitely interesting. It's still on the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, kinda, I did look at it because I was like, I'll come on TikTok, they're social media, so there should be something. But it turns out it's more for marketing people. Uh, and no, no offense to marketing people, it's definitely required. I just did not understand what would I convert using TikTok. Currency, maybe? I don't know. Like, I've, I just was not confused. So if there is a TikTok integration, maybe we can make a few TikTok videos on this. It'll be amazing. But Excellent. Uh, let's thank Ashish for an awesome talk. Thank you. Talk.